Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're all doing well, you see me smile and I'm sure that you are thinking Beppe is extremely happy that we signed Felipe Anderson, wait, because Felipe Anderson will be a big topic of today's video, no I'm laughing, I'm smiling, I'm happy, because I have a good news, unfortunately I have also a bad news, what is the good news? Today on the channel I can already tell you, I can guarantee you, that Juventus will win the Champions League back, and even more, not only one, but two twice in a row. Fantastic, beautiful news. Unfortunately, I also have a bad news. The bad news is that you will have to be patient. Calma, like Max Allegri would say, calma, because you will have to wait until the year 2047, followed by 2048, a total disaster. And on top of that, well, it will be the only one that you will win until 2103. Anyway, we will be there no matter what. I will be personally 67, a total disaster. I will be old, but I will be here on YouTube together with you to celebrate that Champions League. If you're asking, Pepe, what are you speaking about? It is a prediction made yesterday by artificial intelligence, by AI. Hopefully they are wrong. Well, in a way, hopefully we win two Champions League, but hopefully we don't have to wait until 2048. And hopefully we will win a bit more than only two if we are predicting in the year 2100. Entry. It is what it is. It was a quite funny one. So, Maximo of Like, if you didn't yet, please continue to subscribe to the channel because now we start with the real news, with the bomba news reported by the one that is saying, Here we go. Did he say, Where here we go? No, he didn't say, Here we go yet. Fabrizio Romano yesterday explained that the Juventus is one step away from Felipe Anderson as a free agent, so zero, zero. Deal imminent. Formal proposal has been sent to the Brazilian winger, all set to be sealed soon. Verbal agreement already at final stages, details being sorted, and then here we go. What are these final details? Well, I try to speak with a few people that are really aware of things, with some experts of Mercato, with some Italian journalists, they are telling me something, Beppe, there is one thing that needs to be secured first before thinking about Mercato, or at least thinking, we already think about Mercato, but before going with real announcement, etc., etc., is the qualification to Champions League. You never know. Juventus should qualify now, especially with that win over Fiorentina. We should go there, but you never know. Until the mathematics are not telling you you are in Champions League, everything can happen. So, securing Champions League, also, Felipe Anderson is saying, I want to go to Juve. I see myself at Juve, but wait, because I also want to play Champions League. I still believe that I can do something in Champions League. So this is what is missing. They already found kind of an agreement for three years. And then you have, of course, the opinion of the supporters that I was reading yesterday on Telegram group, in our Telegram group, but also on social media. You have a lot of diverse opinions that are all valid. You have the totally no because of the age, you have the totally no, because that's not the, pay, the player that they were dreaming of, that's not the player that they wanted to start off, then you have the no people that are saying, I would even take it into consideration, but if we're taking, that means that we sell or Chiesa, or Sule, or whatever player there up front, and we don't want to, so you have a lot of no's, and then you have also the yes people that are saying, oh, look, Free players, experienced player. It's a player that still is playing with a lot of continuity, that already can play different roles. It's a player that, oh, not bad. Well, what opinion do I have? Look, I tell you, masterclass. Felipe, Ma Felipe Anderson is a masterclass of a first potential signing. For, of course, thinking about a rotational player. It is not a masterclass of a signing if you are thinking about Felipe Anderson is the starter in a 4-3-3 of Juventus 24-25. But don't forget that next season with that CWC Club World Cup, with the Champions League, with the Supercoppa, with the, all these games, we could potentially go to 69 games. Totally crazy. Totally crazy. We'll have a lot of more games. So you need also a bigger team in terms of quantity. We also continue to believe in youth. So we are missing, we said it now, eh? some experienced player, some leadership, some people that are aware of what is Serie A, what is international competition, what it is to play in also other leagues, because he played also at West Ham in Premier League a few years ago before coming back to Lazio. Look, for me, in that rotational uh, system, it's absolutely a good one. And I will tell you even more. There is another reason why I really believe. Now, speaking about Felipe Anderson, we know with the qualities, can play on the left, can play on the right. Sarri tested him, tested him, played him as a second striker a la Mertens last year, where he did quite well in that uh, 
two men up front. No, he, do, he did really well, but on top of that, he's playing with continuity. Look at this year already. He played 43 games, all competition. Didn't score a lot, but 3,214 minutes. If you're looking at all the seasons that we are going back, always playing more than 3,500 minutes per, per season. It's a lot. Especially if we're thinking that it's a player that is playing in that disaster field that is l'Olimpico from Roma, Lazio. It's a disaster field. So a player that, yes, will be 31 in April, but a player that physically is totally integer. The last injury he had was in season 1920 when he was at West Ham. So we are speaking about years ago, about four years ago. I know that a lot of you are dreaming about a Ju Juventus with a striker, 4-3-3 kind of position with the players, Yildiz, Vlahovic and Chiesa. On top of that, as first alternatives on the wings, uh, Ealing Jr. that some people are saying he needs his chance, that 4-3-3 on the left. And then on the right side, the comeback of Mattia Sule. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Of course it's beautiful. I would also like to see that one. Is it strong enough? We can speak about it. We can debate about it. On the other side, I see one big problem with that lineup there. One huge one. It is that you keep Ealing, you keep Vlahovic, you keep Yildiz, exactly the same with Chiesa. By the way, this morning at Zeta del Sport spoke about the agent and the father of Chiesa that were there for Juve Fiorentina. So talks can start again with Juventus and there is an opening for Chiesa to remain at Juve or at least extend one more year because he wants to play all these competitions. Because also on the other side, there were not a lot of offers for Chiesa and he also believes that with another coach, he can have a big chance at Juventus. So, you know, keeping all these players, keeping Sule when he's back from loan, what is the big problem? What is the consequence of it? You earn zero euro. I can tell you already today. So put the notification ring on. Mercato is crazy and Mercato will be crazy. In 2023, last summer, I didn't play Mercato is crazy song. I didn't. I did it a lot in 2022. I didn't last year because I knew that it would have been a Mercato where Juventus would have done nothing. And I was correct because nothing happened except of Wea and uh, the comeback of Cambiaso from loan. This season, I will play it. I will play it a lot because a lot of ins will happen. A lot of outs will happen. A lot of outs that some people will be pissed off about. Fan favorites that will probably leave. Maybe a Sule will leave. Why? Because Felipe Anderson coming, playing on that right side of the field, well, will block some players. Chiesa will, in a 4-3-3, play on the right side because you need to go with a Yildiz, except if you are playing in that 4-2-3-1, where Chiesa, Yildiz, and another one can coexist potentially there. Otherwise, Chiesa will go on the right side. Felipe Anderson, in that 4-3-3, playing as a rotational player coming on for Chiesa is an ideal solution. Also because you are able to sell a Soule for 25, 30 million euro. Not to sign an extra right winger because we just sealed the deal for free. But for free means you sell a young player as Soule that is probably not ready yet for the first team Juventus. And then you can go towards other targets for other roles. Who am I speaking about? Another priority, also confirmed by Fabrizio Romano, by everyone, eh? by all the journalists. It is Calafiori. Because Alexandro leaving at the end of the season, well, we have no players that are able to play in defense with their left foot. Calafiori is the number one. He can fantastically coexist next to a Bremer. So Calafiori is not a replacement for Bremer. It's an additional one. Then Bremer can still leave. He can potentially still leave, not for 60, for much more, because the close is active from next season. So they are thinking about it. But then Bremer will have to be replaced, not with Calafiori. So you see, there are a lot of things that can potentially happen. Felipe Anderson first for zero, investing also money on Calafiori, and then thinking about that midfield. We have Cope Manners that is still a big target, but the name of Turam that we spoke about all summer long last season, that never happened never was really close to Juve, is still a name that is there, that is coming back on the top priority list. So a big midfielder will join Juventus and that money needs to come from somewhere. So selling maybe a Ealing Jr. on top of a Mathias Soule, you are cashing it. Maybe doing a big sacrifice a la Bremer, you cash in and you go with a reinforcement of the entire Juve and don't expect except of a Coop Manners or a 
Turam do have a lot of other big names. There are a lot of names that were not even mentioned on the papers at the moment. So Juventus will go, according to me, with a lot of signings. I remember during the last live, some people asked me, Beppe, how many players do you think that we will have? I said minimum, but seriously, yeah, minimum five new faces, except of returns of loans. I can even, today I feel that I can even agree. If Rabiot doesn't extend, I believe that we will not go for two, but I believe really that we will even go for three new midfielders. Write down uh, what I'm telling you here in terms of feelings, in terms of sensations. Gazzetta de los Sport is continuing to speak about Greenwood. For what reason? Because according to their sources, Bremer is really in the eye of Manchester United and as Juventus probably will also sell Ealing, will sell Sule, they need reinforcement there, left wing, right wing, because we go towards a 4-3-3 and Greenwood could be a player that drops the cash for Bremer. I don't want Greenwood. We know all the negativity around the player. Then if you're speaking exclusively about the performances of the field he's doing a fantastic great season he's a great player in terms of talent then you have all the other things that we need to pay attention for but that's why you see the name of greenwood every single day on gazzetta dello sport so expect a lot of in and out we spoke about calafiori we spoke about ferguson there is also the name of zirikse at the end i don't believe that zirikse will be a player that will join you but why are all these names because we know it there is one big thing there is one big thing that we already anticipated on all the papers, on all the journeys that every day are even stronger in their conviction. Thiago Motta will be the next coach of Juventus 24-25. And that's why you hear also some Bologna players. That's why you hear also a Juventus that can go towards another formation. The players that are linked with Juve are that one. Maybe that's also why Juventus didn't go full power on the winter transfer market because they already knew that they would change a coach. We know that all these kind of things are all going towards one direction. And then, of course, you have another name that is still there because you have another kind of source that is telling us, pay attention for the name Antonio Conte, pay attention for the name of Antonio Conte. According to what I know personally, Antonio Conte will not be the coach of Juve 24-25. Aurelio De Laurentiis tried again with a third offer after two refusal. I don't think that Bayern is interested, but there is also Milan that was interested with Ibrahimovic that found a verbal agreement with Conte. Now they have a bit of difficulties because they wanted to inject some money. They had some problems here and there where everything is going slower but I don't see Conte there not because he's not a great coach not because Juventus doesn't believe that Conte can bring us back immediately to victory in Serie A but for one thing because of ego because of personality because of behavior we are in a season 24-25 where Juventus really wants to put one thing on top of everything and it's not a name. I didn't say they don't want to put one person on top of everything. They want to put one thing on top of everything. And that will be a clear message. Juventus above all. Juventus as an institution, as a club, before everything and everyone. Before the players, before the coach. We don't want everything that goes towards one person. In negative things, but also in positive things. We want more than the name Juntoli because of a fantastic Mercato. We want Juventus. If we are doing well, thanks to all of Juventus. We don't want a situation where Conte could possibly join. And if worst case scenario is doing bad, well, these kind of public press conferences could put more dirt on a Juventus way of working management. That's not what we need. At least that's what they believe that at the moment is not necessary. Now, before continuing speaking about Mercato, 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 I repeat it every single day, which we said also in the beginning of the video, crucial is to qualify as fast as possible to Champions League. Tutto Sport is saying, eh? Furia Max, super angry Max. Ora derby e secondo posto. Now, focus on the derby that we will play on this weekend and then trying to go and reach Milan at that second spot. Before people go totally crazy, Beppe, you don't speak about what happened probably after the game during Juve Fiorentina where Max Allegri was angry with some players, was angry with the management. 
we can speak about it without any problem. I was not there, so I can't tell you. But the rumors are telling that he was absolutely furious with the team. Also, especially with Yildiz for that corner kick situation that we already spoke about yesterday. Well, I tell you from a human perspective, in the situation that Max Allegri is in, you can understand it. You can understand the anger. A lot is at stake for him, not at Juventus, but for his future, for him saying, I reached the minimal objective that you gave me, Juventus, in the beginning of the season, with the tools that you put at disposal to me, without transfer market, etc., etc. I understand a kind of frustration if that 1-0 could have been at risk in the last minutes. Now, am I forgiving? No, because we should have been more relaxed, more serene, more positive after a win, trying to think immediately about that Torino game. But from a human perspective, you can even understand it. If you are in a high tension, high risk situation, sometimes you can lose it. Sometimes you can lose it for a few minutes. It is what it is. Now, speaking about that, this weekend, you will have to pay extremely attention. Why? Because the ones that are behind us, they will all have on paper easy games. Napoli for Rosinone. Bologna Monza, Atalanta Verona, these are the team. Roma against Udinese. So, games that on paper they all should win, and that's why we have to win against Torino. We play luckily on the 13th of April, so we play on Saturday, 6 pm Italian time, which means that we are playing before all of them. So, losing would be a disaster because you are even giving them more hope and more motivation and that's why we have to go on the field winning and then relaxing for all that Sunday watching the other one hopefully some of them are not able to win so that we can even going faster to that Champions League qualification will be extremely important that was it for me I hope you enjoyed the, enjoyed the video Maximo of like yeah support the channel, likes, comment in the, the in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to the channel grazie forza you bet It's crazy.